Have you seen this video? Inside, we find, we found uh, eight babies burned in this corner. An Israeli soldier conducts an interview in front of a destroyed home of a kibbutz. He says Hamas fighters burned babies and then beheaded them. But this is all a lie. And I'm going to prove it to you using Israeli media. Yes, that is right. Israeli media. But first, let's ask an important question. How did the concrete walls of this home behind the soldier turn into rubble? Fires burn wood and other flammable items. They do not collapse concrete structures like this. Children in the same room, then someone come and kills them all. 15 girls and teenagers that put in the same room, 300 and this over. This is a massacre. Now the Israelis want you to believe that Hamas fighters did this, but we know that they were only armed with machine guns and small grenade launchers. That doesn't cause this level of damage. So then how did they destroy concrete homes like this? The answer answer is they didn't. The Israelis did. What? That is shocking. But why? And how would the Israelis do that? Well, Israeli media has all the answers. They interviewed the IDF soldiers who responded to the Hamas attack, and they learned something shocking. The IDF was struggling to handle the Hamas fighters. Tuval Escapa, or however you pronounce his name, a member of the security team for Kibbutz Bieri, set up a hotline to coordinate between Kibbutz residents and the Israeli army. He told the Israeli newspaper Haaretz that as desperation began to set in, the commanders in the field made difficult decisions, including shelling houses on their occupants in order to eliminate the terrorists along with the hostages. These reports indicate that orders came down from the military's high command to attack homes and other areas inside Israel, even at the cost of many Israeli lives. According to Haaretz, the army was only able to restore control over Bieri after admittedly shelling the homes of Israelis who had been taken captive. The price was terrible. At least 112 residents were killed, according to the paper. Others were kidnapped. Now, much of the shelling in Bieri was carried out by Israeli tank crews, as a reporter for the Israeli foreign ministry-sponsored outlet I-24 noted during a visit to Bieri. Small and quick Quaint homes bombarded or destroyed, children's toys lying around while maintained lawns of grass ripped up by the tracks of an armored vehicle. Perhaps a tank. Perhaps a tank. Perhaps a tank. In other words, the IDF, in an act of desperation, decided to just kill everyone, including hostages. This is their words, not mine. In fact, Yasmin Porat, an attendee of the Nova Music Festival, who fled into the kibbutz, told Israeli radio that when Israeli special forces arrived during a hostage standoff, they, quote, eliminated everyone, including the hostages, because there was very, very heavy crossfire. <laughs> כי היה שם חילופי ירים מאוד מאוד קשים, חילופי אש מטורפים, אפילו שני פקזים של טנק שירו לתוך הבית, שזה בית קיבוצי קטן, זה לא איזה, רואים את זה בחדשות. She goes on to describe how Hamas militants tied her partner's hands behind his back. She saw her partner lying on the ground, still alive. She went on to say that Israeli security forces killed him and other hostages as they opened fire on the remaining militants inside, including with tank shells. <laughs> This is why you see large bits of shrapnel and bullet holes in the walls of destroyed kibbutz homes. It's why you see homes turn into rubble. And sadly, it's why you find severely burnt bodies of Israeli hostages. But there's more. The IDF also used Apache attack helicopters. In an interview with Israeli media outlet Mako, an Apache pilot admitted that many of the cars he fired rockets at contained hostages. But wait, there's even more. Israeli security forces also opened fire on fleeing Israelis whom they mistook for Hamas gunmen. A resident of Ashkelon named Danielle Rachel described nearly being killed after escaping from the Nova Music Festival when it was attacked by militants. As we reached the roundabout at a kibbutz, we saw Israeli security forces, she recalled. We held our heads down because we automatically knew they'd be suspicious of us in a small beat-up car from the same direction the terrorists were coming. Our forces began shooting at us. Lastly, let's discuss how an IDF commander ordered an airstrike on his own position. The very first target the Palestinian fighters attacked was the Erez checkpoint. The attack was so fierce that the IDF commander, Avi Rosenfeld, in an act of desperation, he called for an airstrike on his own position. The IDF bombed their own own base in order to kill the Palestinian militants. So what should we take from all this? Do we absolve Hamas of their actions on October 7th? Of course not. None of this would have happened had they not attacked. Now, whether or not they have the right to resist occupation and apartheid with the use of force is a topic for another video. But the point of this video 
is to highlight how the IDF's poor response and performance led to the deaths of their own people. As several Israeli hostages have already made clear, the Palestinian militants were kind to them despite the aggression. And as the Nova survivor Yasmin Porat put it, she believes the militants didn't want to kill them. She believes their goal was to take them back to Gaza as hostages. The entire point of the attack seems to be the capturing of Israelis as hostages in order to trade them for thousands of Palestinian political prisoners. And in the chaos that ensued, many people lost their lives. Now some people say, who cares how it went down? People died. Babies died. Is that not awful? Well, of course it is. But the reason we have to cut through Israeli propaganda is because it's being used to justify acts of genocide in Gaza. Israelis believe deep down to their core that their babies were beheaded and that their women were raped and tortured before being killed. And this simply isn't true. And even with Israeli media reporting the facts, they may never change their minds. But the rest of the world needs to know the truth because it is the world that has given Israel the green light to commit acts of atrocity in Gaza. And there's growing concern of an escalation that may erupt into a greater regional conflict. So share this video and help spread the facts. The world deserves to know the truth. And without you, that will never happen. RIP to all those who lost their lives, especially the thousands of innocent children in Gaza, incurring the wrath of a misled population. Free Palestine.